Hello, good day to you. It's me, Andy, and Talking Really Younger. Today's uh, little video is quite eye opening. Uh, this is about the Magna Carta Common Law, Article 61, that was going around quite a lot uh, over the last year. People were quoting this as being something that you could use to avoid any sort of restrictions, uh, especially when you have a shop you want to open. You simply print out all the leaflets and put them on your window and it should protect you from uh, police entering and giving you tickets for breaking the law, which are the Coronavirus Act and the Public Health Act, which they use to create the, obviously the restrictions, which are lockdown, shut down the business and also stopping you from going out etc and uh, going to work the Magna Carta and the common law idea article 61 in particular is mentioned which is um, something that's confusing because if you look it up it is very confusing however I discovered this video today he's a legal legal barrister I believe and uh, his video is going to blow your minds. Have a look at the video. I'm going to play a little clip. And if you want to watch the rest of it, then go to his YouTube channel and uh, watch it from there. But quite literally, it's an eye opener. So over the lockdown, you've no doubt seen in various news articles and social media sites, this message that's been popped up on various businesses windows throughout the lockdown, whereby they've refused to close down citing the Magna Carta as a reason. So in essence, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, lots of businesses throughout the lockdown put up a sign in their window quoting Article 61 of the Magna Carta as the right to enter lawful dissent if they believe that they are being governed unjustly. However, Chapter 61, not Article 61, made no reference to lawful dissent. And in any event, it no longer exists. And when it did, it didn't give any general right to enter dissent or rebellion. The first Magna Carta was drawn up in 1215, but it was quickly declared null and void by the Pope because it interfered with the authority of the King and a civil war broke out in England. After this, it was reissued in various different forms and again in 1225, and this is the version that forms the basis of the common law that exists today. The contents of the Magna Carta was replaced by a statute book in 1297, but much of this has been repealed as well. There were 63 clauses in the original Magna Carta of 1215, but only four of these are still somewhat relevant today. Clause 61, which is what's being cited, was never included in any subsequent version of the Magna Carta and was not incorporated in law as we know it today. So what about the argument of freemen of the land that the laws only apply if you consent to those laws? First of all, I should say there's been no instance of when such arguments have been held up in court, although that's not to say that they haven't been made in court. And indeed, the courts have specific procedures to deal with such arguments as they arise. And all of these arguments are based upon the difference between common law and statute law. And the primary difference is about how these laws are created in the first place. In the simplest sense, common law is law that is created by decisions of a court when presented with a case and a set of facts, whereas statutory law is written and codified law that is passed by the legislature and made by the government. Examples of such statutory law may incorporate many of the decisions that have been made by the courts over a period of time. It may include various bits of European law that have come in along the way, and the government codifies this law into a single body of law called an act which starts its life as a bill, which is a draft document, and once this is approved by Parliament, it's given royal assent and it becomes an act of law. So let's break down some of the statements that are made on these documents that are put up in shop windows. The first one being, I do not consent. Now, whilst your consent is required to enter into a legal contract with another person or organisation, there is no principle in English or Welsh law that your consent is required before being bound by the laws of Parliament. A fundamental principle of our constitution is that Parliament is sovereign and it can make and unmake any law that it wishes. For example, see the Bill of Rights of 1688 and 89, the Act of Settlement 1701, 
the Claim of Right Act of 1689 for Scotland, the Acts of Union 1706 and 1707, all of these laws would be rather meaningless if a simple declaration by an individual meant that they didn't consent and therefore the laws didn't apply. And I'm afraid that's the case. You cannot simply refuse to consent to the laws of Parliament. Another statement on this document reads, this business stands under the jurisdiction of common law. Well, absolutely yes, we live in a common law society. As I said earlier, common law is principally made of the decisions made by courts. But if Parliament creates a new written codified law that disagrees with one of the decisions of a court, Parliament's law takes precedence. Another statement in this document reads, as the business owners, we are exercising our rights to earn a living. Well, as we stand, there is no such right to earn a living, whether statute, domestic, international, or indeed common law. You may take a look at the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights, but the UK opted out of this charter as a member of the EU and is no longer bound at all post-Brexit. Another statement made on this document is, I'm under no obligation, nor will I answer any questions or give you any details. Now, generally speaking, yes, there's no general obligation for you to answer questions and to provide any details. However, this is going to change rather sharply if the police suspect that you have committed or are committing a criminal offence. Think COVID restrictions. There is a power under PACE, the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, to arrest you, to establish your details. And if you find yourself in this situation, I would highly recommend that you cooperate with the police, otherwise you're going to make matters a whole lot worse for yourself. So with all that said, there are only four commonly agreed clauses that remain in law from the Magna Carta today. And those are one, maintaining the rights of the English church. Clause 13, relating to the City of London, permitting it to enjoy its liberties and ancient customs. And clauses 39 and 40, which ban arbitrary detention and provide for trial by jury. So as always, by no means is this a completely comprehensive video. There are literally books on the subject, but this is a brief overview if you've been wondering what such arguments about, whether they hold any water, and what it means in relation to acts of parliament. Right, that's it then. So Magna Carta common law, you can't use it is um, completely pointless. It's um, something that's not going to protect you. And a lot of these solutions out there need to be researched a little bit better than they are because they, they, are, they are put out there as being definitive, the, the definitive answer to everything. You know, use this system and you'll be able to get away with it. But unfortunately, when it comes to the crunch of the matter, a lot of this stuff is a lot of rubbish, i.e., you know, when they tell you, oh, don't worry about it, just don't do this and don't do that, but you'll be safe, it's fine. But when it happens to you, the individual, and you suddenly find yourself with a, in prison or with a ticket, even though most tickets that have been issued under this, the FPNs, the majority of those have been refused and uh, cancelled by CPS. So that's a good thing. It proves that they are not legal. There you go. That's it. That's the end of that. So if you are thinking about using this, then probably the answer is don't. Have a good day. Bye for now.